the guys still on the train, you should get started here. Uh, first of all, welcome to the erotic reading event. Which, yeah, welcome indeed, definitely. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, as I said before, start off with three of our readers, have a little bit of a break, go into an open mic section, have a little bit of a break, and then we're going to have the readers again. So uh, what we're going to start off with is D.L. King. Uh, now she spends an enormous amount of time reading and writing smut in her New York City apartment in postage stamp sized garden. She is the editor of Seductress, Erotic Tales of Immortal Desire, The Harder She Comes, Butch Femme Erotica, The Independent Publisher Award Gold Medalist, Carnal Machines, Steampunk Erotica, The Sweetest Kiss, Ravishing Vampire Erotica, and The Lander Literary Award Finalist, where the girls are urban lesbian erotica. D.L. King is the publisher and editor of the new Erotica Review site, Erotica Revealed. The author of dozens of short stories, her work can be found in various editions of Best Lesbian Erotica, Best, Web Best Women's Erotica, Best Women's Erotica, there we go, The Mammoth Book of Best New Erotica, as well as such titles as One Night Only, Power Play, Luscious, Her So Good, Fast Girls Gotta Have It, Please Man, Sweet Love, and Frenzy, among others. She's the author of two novels of female domination and male submission, The Melano Project and The Art of Melano. Find out more at her blog, which is dlkingerotica.blogspot.com. That's all one word, dlkingerotica. So, give a very, very warm black and welcome to DL King. Thank you. Uh, so, hi, I'm D.L. King, um, and I'm going to read some really filthy stuff for you tonight, I hope that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start off with uh, part of a story that I wrote that appears in a book uh, edited by Violet Blue called uh, One Night Only, it's a book of one night stands, um, and this is a story called Four. The dress was red red with a restrained intensity, a deep, wet sort of red, a red that slithered behind her eyes and rubbed up against her hypothalamus. Just seeing it on the rack caused an involuntary shiver, a, com a contraction of my pelvic floor muscles and made my pupils dilate. Seeing the price tag almost dissuaded me from trying it on. Almost. It fit like it was made by my own private couturier. The fabric was soft with a slight tooth to the hand. It draped with its own gentle weight. The dress had a high boat neck brushing just over the top of my clavicle, but with a fitted bodice. Not too tight, just enough to enhance my small breasts and cling gently to the curve of my body made from torso to waist. Long fitted sleeves and a slight flare from the hips ending just below my knee completed the picture, or at least the front of the picture. Simple and elegant. Gazing at my reflection in the three-way mirror in the fitting room at Saks, the physical responses I had on seeing the dress on the rack multiplied exponentially. In the back, the dress fell from the center seam of the sleeves to a deep V just above, and I do mean just above, the crack of my ass. I couldn't stop looking at the way it seemed to attach itself to my sides. Following the curve in at my waist and then the beginning of the curve back out at my hips, I turned and turned, I moved my arms and twisted my body. What made it stay glued to me the way it did? I guess you get what you pay for. I had no idea what possessed me to bring it to the conference. What use would I have for a dress like that at a conference with a bunch of neurologists and neurosurgeons? But after three days of panels and presentations and then finally presenting my paper at the tail end of the last day to a three-quarters empty room with mostly men checking their watches to make sure they didn't miss the airport shuttle, I had enough. Knowing my presentation would be one of the last, I decided to take an extra night at the hotel and return home the next day, which was a good thing, because I really needed a break after the last attendee thanked me for my presentation and practically ran out the door. It was only three o'clock, a little early for cocktails, so I decided to have a swim in the hotel pool and relax before dinner. Like I said, I don't know why I brought the dress, but I do know why I put it on that night. 
Once rejuvenated from swimming in a nap, I realized I'd exhausted all my conference wear, and I didn't think jeans and a t-shirt would cut it in the hotel's restaurant. The dress felt unbelievably sexy, and I found myself being extra attentive to my makeup. I clipped my hair up in a sort of messy bunch to get it off my neck. I didn't want my hair to break the expanse of bare skin from neck to ass. I remembered reading somewhere that Japanese kimonos were worn with the neck sticking down and back because Japanese men found the back of a woman's neck sexually stimulating. Looking at the drape of the dress, I had to agree with them. I, ran my way, I made my way down to the hotel bar. I love beautifully appointed boutique hotels, and this one in Los Angeles was no exception. The bar was beautifully designed in rich browns, platinum, and gold, and the low tables and upholstered furniture looked comfortable and inviting. A few of the tables had groups of people gathered around them, but I had never felt that comfortable sitting at a table when I was alone. So I, cho I chose a seat at the bar and ordered a pomegranate martini. The drink was perfect. I soon became lost in thoughts about one of the presentations on using electrical implants at the base of the spine to combat chronic nerve pain. I raised my glass to the bartender and he nodded. As he was putting my new drink down, someone took the stool next to me. I've got it. A masculine voice said. I guess he was about 50 with hair graying at his temples. He wore a very expensive looking suit and red tie. His nails were manicured. I looked at him. I looked, I looked from his hands to his face and he smiled. Thank you. Were you here from the medical conference? He didn't look familiar, but there had been quite a few people there. No, I'm with the financial conference. I manage a hedge fund. As I never completely understood what that was about, I asked him what he did, and he spent the next hour discussing money, finance, and his life. The conversation was interesting and intelligent, and although he was older than the guys I was usually interested in, he was dead sexy. So when he put his hand on my back and slid it down to the top of the dress and asked if I'd like to join him in his room, I didn't have to think too hard. I probably should have opted for dinner, but after two and a half martinis, my lizard brain was more interested in the meat in his pants than the meat in the restaurant. His hand never lost contact with the small of my back as he escorted me to the elevator. On the way to the 34th floor, I looked him over more closely. I'd never been much for one night, one night stands. Maybe it was the alcohol, but I couldn't wait to see what he was hiding under those very expensive clothes. His room was about 10 floors higher than mine and had a better view. I went to the window to look out and he followed me. He bent down and kissed the back of my neck. His hand stroked my sides over the dress before sliding inside. You are gorgeous, he said, hands exploring under the sides of the dress, up past the swell of my breasts and back down to my ass. He placed my hands on the window and reached down under the hem of the dress to slide it up and back. His breath caught as he ran his hands up my naked ass. I suppose this dress isn't well suited to wearing panties, is it, he asked. I turned around and began to undo his tie and caught my hands. We have plenty of time for that, he said, sliding my dress up and over my head. Once off, he turned it right side out and draped it over the desk chair before taking a step back to look at me. The only things I had on were my shoes. Do you like the view, he asked. Yes, I do. It's much. His lips covered mine before I could complete the statement, and his tongue parted them to explore my own. He tasted a very fine scotch with a slight hint of expensive cigar. My hands reached up to explore his chest, and he spun me around, facing the glass again. I like it too, he said. Again, he placed my hands above my head against the glass as he stroked and kneaded my breast before pinching and pulling at my nipples. My clip was buzzing, and I could feel moisture begin seeping from my pussy as his hands stroked lower over my ribs down to the V of my sex. He ran his hands over the crease between my legs and my cunt. Spread your legs. As I did, his hands snaked around my thighs to stroke the crack of my ass before pulling my cheeks apart. I could feel his hard cock under his trousers as he pressed against me. Keeping my backside open with one hand, he cupped and squeezed my pussy with the other before inserting two fingers inside my slit and spreading my lips open. Oh, God. I moaned as I was left open, front and rear. Please, I murmured. Look at the view. I'm told you can see Catalina from here if it's a clear day. Although I don't really know where it is. Maybe you can see it now. Are there lights on Catalina? I felt his thumb pressing against my anus and involuntary shiver shook my head. No? 
I don't know, I whispered. I pushed back against his hand, but he moved me. He moved with me. Now, now, don't get so anxious. There'll be plenty of time for that later. I could feel my moisture coating the fingers, pulling my cunt lips apart. Please, I murmured again, rocking my hips from side to side. You're so wet. He closed his fingers and rubbed them against my opening. Is this what you want? Feel how they slide. He teased my opening with the tip of one of his fingers, still keeping my lips parted with the other. I thought I'd go crazy with desire. I'd never experienced anything quite like it before. I'm no stranger to sex, I'm a very carnal person, but this guy was directing sensations I'd never experienced before. He removed the finger from my opening and again pushed my lips apart with both fingers. He pushed the edge of his other hand deeper, splitting my buttocks even more. This time, I responded with a full body shiver. Lovely, he said. Now spread your legs further and press your tits against the glass. Yes, that's right. He withdrew his hands and I must have made a noise because he said, don't worry, I'll be back. I just need to get something from the bathroom. Look for Catalina and tell me if you see it. I fogged up the glass, panting through my open mouth. All sorts of thoughts went through my head, but moving from the position he placed me in wasn't one of them. I saw what I was fairly certain was a Santa Monica pier, but I still had no idea where Catalina was or if it could be seen from here. I was just beginning to realize how inane that thought was when I felt his hand on my waist and the other rubbing between my legs. Did you find it? My head shook back and forth jerkily while I felt my muscles begin to tighten pre-orgasmically. So responsive, he whispered against my neck as he buried a finger in my pussy and stroked my clip with his thumb. My orgasm was mind-numbing in the way all little orgasms are when what you really want is a full body release. Just to take the edge off a little bit, he said. He backed up and told me to turn around. And then there's a lot more sex that happens that I'm not going to read. <laughs> Thank you.